how's everybody doing today? Here I am in Toronto, my hometown, at Pine Hills Cemetery uh, in Scarborough, which is a suburb of Toronto. And this cemetery, for me, is very, um, uh, I don't know, important and meaningful and emotional. Just over here, just over that way, it's a huge cemetery, uh, is where my grandfather's buried. And he passed away before I was born. So I never got to meet him. But my grandmother is now buried beside him and I live with her for the first 20 years of my life. So she's a very, very important person to me. I loved her very much. And so I come to visit them a lot. And as kids, we, my cousin lived right across the street. So we'd come and play in the cemetery and we always try to find my grandfather's grave and then we, you know, but we were kids and we'd play and we'd run around. And sadly also, a very close friend of mine passed away at a very young age, uh, he's buried right at the other end of the cemetery, my friend George, who I love very much. And so this cemetery has a lot of uh, heaviness attached to it for, uh, for me and yeah, I'm here today to visit the grave of somebody you may not have heard of if you watch my channel regularly. You may not be a hockey fan now. If you're a hockey fan and you're watching this, you probably know who I'm talking about. Peter Zezel. Peter Zezel was a Toronto Maple Leaf and I've got the shirt on. Now it's I, a little too hot to wear one of my jerseys. So I just put on a t-shirt. It's, it's a later one, it's Austin Matthews. Unfortunately, my Peter Zezel ones, if I had, wouldn't fit me anymore because he played a long time ago. But Peter Zezel, also I forgot, because I was so, when I was thinking about doing this video, I was so wrapped up in the fact that he was a Toronto boy. He played for our junior team, the Toronto Marlboros, for two years in the Ontario Hockey League. And then he played for the Toronto Maple Leafs in two of the biggest seasons we've ever had of my lifetime. But he also played, he played for seven teams in total, but he was drafted 41st overall by the Philadelphia Flyers and he played four years for the Flyers. Here's his first goal. His first NHL goal. Left corner to the Kerr. Kerr in front. Pass the prop. Deflect. Open that shot. Score. Zezel. He gets number one in the NHL and he takes it out. So I kind of claim Peter Zezel. I think a lot of Toronto fans do as a Toronto Maple Leaf but I forgot. Well the Flyers fans really love Peter Zezel. So what's interesting, I'm gonna take you to his grave right now. I've got to find it. I know generally the area where he is. Uh, just have to locate it. So I'm gonna be doing a lot of talking in this video about Peter Zezel. He died at the age of 44, a very young age of uh, he hemolytic anemia, which is a rare blood disorder. Very, very sad. And he was a great person. Now. Every teammate, every own team owner, everybody speaks so highly of him. People loved Peter Zezel, full of life and an amazing person and for the community, especially the Toronto soccer and hockey communities. He did so much coaching, starting and doing summer leagues, summer coaching camps, things like that. He actually was had the choice when he was young of being a soccer player. He was drafted by the Toronto Blizzard, I believe, which was a soccer team back then. He actually had the chance to be a soccer player or a hockey player. Do you know the, ch the odds of being good at, that good in both sports to be drafted is very, very high. There's, or very, very low. Well, the odds are stacked against you to be in either one, to be drafted for the NHL and to actually play in the NHL and actually play in a professional soccer league. He did both. That's incredible. Still kind of looking around. I should be looking while I'm talking. But what's interesting also about Peter Zezel is he, when he was playing, so he played four seasons for the Flyers. Oh, and this. This is one of the greatest checks you'll ever see, body checks, in the history of hockey. This was in semifinals in the 80s uh, with the Quebec Nordiques, Dale Hunter, Philadelphia Flyers, Peter Zezel. Dale Hunter was gunning for Peter Zezel here behind the boards, and Zezel just 
telegraphed it right away and slammed it right into the boards. Watch this. Play through to Gillis. He can't handle it. Flyers take it. How? A little tough to his self. Zezel picks it off. Boom! He runs right over Hunter and knocks out two panes of glass. And Mark went up for Peter Zezel. Hunter and Zezel. And Hunter was going in there looking to take the body. but or, or Pardon me. Hunter was going in to take Zezel all the way. But Zezel was peeking. He could see him coming. And he braced himself. And boy, oh boy, I'll tell you, there's two locomotives that are going to bump. How crazy is that? Oh, my goodness. That is wild. And then, of course, he played for the Leafs. And he scored in game one of the conference finals in 1994 against the Vancouver Canucks. He scored the overtime goal. And it's one of the greatest moments of my life. I can't imagine what it was for him. But for me, for being young and a hockey fan, wow. Watch this. McLean comes out of the net for reasons that only he knows, and he can't play the puck properly. Zenzel, with no goalie, puts it by McLean, who has no idea where he is. McLean, and not enough time to recover as Zenzel makes the shot to win the game with 3.05 left in the overtime. We could have had a letdown, and, and the guys certainly came back and, and played real well. And Pat came in the dressing room and said, we've been here before, let's... Uh, Let's do it again. But everybody regrouped in the dressing room. And we so, yeah, that's pretty incredible. Now, as you can see, this cemetery is uh, really tough to find. Now, I'm in section one. So if you're looking to find Peter Zezel's grave, sorry about the sun, come in Pine Hill Cemetery, right where I showed you at the beginning, you're going to see the office right in front of you. Section one is right from the parking lot, straight ahead this way. So he had an incredible career. What's really special about his career is, you see, when you're a hockey player, when you're a forward especially, you're going to be either, you're there to score goals as a forward, but a third and fourth line are usually there to play defensive uh, against the other team's top lines, their scoring lines. So Peter Zezel started off as a scorer. And when I was a kid, when my father would take me to Toronto Marbles games, Ontario Hoggedy games, Peter Zezel was the man. He, I idolized him. My sister loved him. I mean, he was a good looking dude and he could play hockey really well. And he was in Youngblood with Rob Lowe and Patrick Swayze. And Keanu we uh, Reeves. Let me weave a story about Keanu Reeves. And Keanu Reeves, look here. You know what Gordie Howe's bonus was when he signed? Jacket. A team jacket. How's the agent? The way you guys looked at practice this week. You'll be lucky if you're drafted by the Tallahassee Warthogs. We got three bus tickets here. Nothing is owing. You're shaking their hands. You want to be able to look them dead in the eye. Not down at this. Yeah, that's Peter Zezel. So he... <laughs> he was also in a movie with Rob Lowe. It was incredible. Like, we just re... And here he is right here, actually. I thought I recognized, that. yes. Um, so it was, incre it was incredible that he was in a movie. He was a Toronto boy. I, I looked up to him, I admired him. I was just starting out playing hockey, so I thought I wanted to be like Peter Zezel. And he was a scorer. And then when he started in the NHL, that's what he did. He was a scorer for goals, assist. When he played for the Marlboros, the junior league, he was a game breaker. What a game breaker is, is you're gonna go out if your team's down 3-2, they're going to send you out because they know that you can make that you can change the course of a game with a hit, a goal, an assist, a cool play, something. That's a game breaker. And Peter Zezel was a game breaker. So he was a scorer for the first few seasons. But then when he came to Toronto, we needed a defensive specialist. And Pat Burns, our coach at the time, said, Peter, you're going to be a defensive shutdown forward. And he won more face-offs. I don't know how many he won. But it was like, if you needed, if, you know, the play was in our end, put Peter Zezel out there in the clutch. He's going to win the faceoff and get the puck out. He was a defensive forward. And then he scored that overtime goal, of course. Now, what's interesting about his grave is when I was looking online about it, because I knew he was buried here for a while, but not, I, you know, I, I had never visited it before. And I looked online, I was like, it had a little plaque. I'll show you right now little plaque like that donated by the cemetery and I thought but his parents are buried here too how is it possible that he 
has only a small plaque. So I came to the cemetery and asked why. They didn't really have an answer because it's been so long, well, 2009. But here's his grave now, and he's now on, it's beautiful, he's on the, the one where his parents were. The plaque that was on the ground, uh, like the, the marking, the headstone, which was small, I'm saying plaque, but it's a headstone, is gone now, and the bigger monument is here. Take a look. So there you go. And there he is as a maple leaf. There he is in the later years of his life. And as a soccer player, his two loves with his parents right here, Peter and Valerie. Memories eternal, beloved son of. And the 3120 is actually the uh, marking of where the grave is. That's what that number signifies. It's not on all of them, but it's on a f some of them in this cemetery. So actually just now while I was here, uh, Peter's family came and uh, were standing near me while I was filming. And I talked to them for a little bit. Uh, they just asked who I, who I was. And I just explained to them what I was doing. And they said, okay. And I said, okay, I'm going to step back and let you have your time. And of course I did. Uh, so that was interesting. They seemed very sweet. And um, just coming out to take a look at Peter's grave. It means a lot more to them. Obviously, they're related to the, to the man. And I brought something. As you know, I always bring a rock. And I do have one to leave here at Peter's grave. Let me put it on for, for him now. Right there. But of course, I also brought a puck. I've got a few pucks at home and I want to bring one for Peter. few other things about Peter that I know is uh, he was never inducted into the Hockey Hall of Fame or the Soccer Hall of Fame but he was given the Brian Butt Award which is an award given by the Soccer Hall of Fame for players who were great but didn't qualify to be in the Soccer Hall of Fame. He didn't play long enough but also for outstanding contributions to their community as well. So he was recognized in that way. That was in 2010. And then he's also uh, first cousins with Alex Lifeson from Rush. Guitarist from Rush. Wow. That was something that I read and I didn't know that. Peter's career in the NHL, in the National Hockey League, ended in a rather strange way. Um, his niece, Julianne, was terminally ill, and he was playing for the Vancouver Canucks, so on the western part of Canada. And he, at the trade deadline, he requested a trade to an eastern team so he could be closer to his niece and his family. And for whatever reason, Brian Burke, pure follow the NHL that name means a lot to a lot of people different things to different people Brian Burke didn't honor that request and traded him to the furthest team a team in his own conference which doesn't make sense you don't you usually trade players away so they're not playing against you as much uh, he traded to the Anaheim Ducks which is in California which is the last place Peter wanted to go so he quit he didn't report to the Ducks and he retired. There was a lot of backlash against Brian Burke and the Canucks, rightfully so. And 
finally the Canucks actually bought out Peter's contract for about I think it was about 110,000 and made a donation to a cancer charity of the same amount so they tried to make good on their big blunder there now of course Peter never played hockey again he was sick for 11 years with this uh, rare blood disorder and finally in 2009 that's when he was taken off life support May 26 uh, I know that a few of his teammates were there to see him, Mark Osborne. He was on a line, I think it was Mark Osborne, Bill Berg, Peter Zezel, 92, 93, and 93, 94. I'm telling you, those are the two most exciting years of my life as a hockey fan, because I'm a, I'm a Leaf fan. I'm a hockey fan and a Leaf fan, but now I realize I'm a Leaf fan before I'm a hockey fan now. <sighs> because as much as I love hockey, I, I live and breathe with the Leafs, and um, I can't even watch hockey now that they're out. I didn't even make the playoffs. I get too upset. But I remember those two years. I was young and I was watching. I was in awe of all these players. And my father took me to games. And seeing Peter Zezel play as a Maple Leaf was everything for me. And my sister too, because she really loved him too. Uh, yeah. So he's a well-known. This is a this in Philadelphia. He's revered still. I mean, he was an incredible rookie and then was just such a, a powerhouse. Like I said, then he got traded, he played 17s. So Philadelphia Flyers and the Leafs is where he made his biggest uh, impacts, for sure. But he made a big impact on his teammates, and like I said, the owners and fans and his family. What a generous guy. I mean, he quit hockey to be with his ill niece. It's a great person. I realize I'm talking a lot. It's not so much I can show you other than the grave. I, I wish and, and and clips of Peter playing. Here's another one. Don't pass. He's got Sizzle in front. Go! Oh, my! And that's just hustle. Yeah. Take another look at the grave here. Okay, so um, I'm gonna go visit uh, my friend George and, uh, and my grandparents. I'm gonna end the video now. And rest in peace, Peter Zezelay and your parents. And thanks for bringing Toronto and Philadelphia so much joy as a hockey player and hockey fans in other cities, I'm sure as well. Love Peter Zezel. I, when I was a kid, Wayne Gretzky was everything to me, but then I loved every Maple Leaf. But I loved Peter Zezel, even though he played for the Flyers because he was a Toronto boy and he played for the Marlboros, our junior team, and that's where I got to know him. Now I'm only a fan of if, a player if he plays for the Leafs. I, I, I'm just so biased. Bleed blue and white, and I can't help it. But back when I was a kid, I liked players from other teams. So Peter says I followed his career the whole time. Uh, go Leafs, go. Next season. All right, rest in peace, Peter Zezel. Peace to all of you, I love you all. Peace, out. And as you can see, it's getting very dark right now. Uh, it's about to storm, but I want to show you that. That's Zezel Way here in Scarborough. Peter Zezel is actually his family's descendants of the people who uh, founded this area. And in 2014, they named the street after Peter Zezel and his family. And this is it right here. All right, peace.